Good afternoon. Uh, it is a pleasure uh, to have you uh, this afternoon in this webinar uh, from uh, the ECH Alliance uh, Ecosystem Network, in which uh, we are going to present uh, the profiles of uh, VLC Health, which is the Valencian uh, ECH Alliance Ecosystem. The seminar is uh, prepared in a way in which uh, we will follow the agenda uh, you have uh, in your screen. Uh, and the order will be uh, the introduction, which is uh, me, is Antonio Can is my name. I am uh, the coordinator of uh, the uh, ECH Alliance Ecosystem uh, in Valencia, VLC Health. And it's a pleasure, as I said, uh, to have you this afternoon. Uh, once uh, I have uh, completed my introduction, uh, we'll, we'll also have uh, a few minutes. Uh, Michaela uh, Nordenfeld, which is uh, she's the representative of uh, ECH Alliance uh, that will come in a little bit about uh, the network. Then uh, we have a list of uh, speakers. Uh, we will follow the column in which we will have firstly Elena Rocher, then Jane Moreno and so on. And I will uh, introduce uh, each of them uh, just uh, the minute before uh, the beginning of uh, their own presentation. So as I said, uh, a pleasure to have you. Uh, the purpose of this seminar is just uh, the presentation of the main actors uh, in the ECH Alliance in Valencia. Uh, so we have uh, the participants, uh, the members of the working group, uh, which is, uh, the, uh, as I said, the good representation of uh, the actors that we have in Valencia in terms of uh, uh, healthy aging and uh, the different areas of related with uh, ECH Alliance. Well, uh, just to uh, continue, uh, may I offer uh, the microphone to Michaela, not without uh, thanking ECH Alliance for uh, the support uh, for this seminar and for providing us with uh, the technical uh, background to uh, be able to be with you this afternoon. So, Michaela, please. Thank you, Antonio. I will show my screen. So, my name is uh, Michaela Nordenfeldt, and I am the International Ecosystem Coordinator of ECH Alliance. And I will just briefly show you, uh, explain to you what the ECH Alliance is all about. It is really about connecting people, connecting stakeholders, uh, the work within the area of healthcare. And I have, uh, there we go, trying to put up the, oh, it doesn't work. Oh, I'll show this. Uh, I'm going to firstly talk about the, well, the ecosystems in the international network. Today's webinar, we have the Valencia ecosystem, but within the ECH Alliance, there is a whole list of, uh, of ecosystems out there and uh, we within the ECH Alliance network we work we try to connect the different ecosystems in order for them to benefit and learn from each other. Today we have 15 around well roughly 15 ecosystems existing ecosystems and we have quite a, a, a number that are about to be launched if I continue also in uh, working it's on a global level. We're also working on uh, with an alliance in Canada, in New York, and in China. So it's really a global network. Continue. Briefly. Show you the, the connector. This is really our main tool to connect. It's a digital collaboration uh, platform. I'll show you the next page. Where we provide well, it's really a profile, the ability, the possibility to profile yourself, some marketplace in order to search for project partners and you can promote your own projects, a communication tool, and where you can also put up your um, events, workshops, and that's today, have a webinar. Apart from the, here we are, I'll continue, excuse me. Um, besides the different individual ecosystems working in, within their own region, we have a couple of working groups where 
we have ecosystems that are working more on a, on a horizontal level. And today we are we have three working groups up and running. That's the Medicines Optimization Group, the Health Strategy Group, and the Mental Health and Wellbeing Group. I think that's it for me, and I will give back the screen to you, Antonio. Thank you. Thank you, Micaela. Thank you, Micaela. Now it's my pleasure to introduce Elena Rocher. Elena Rocher is the coordinator of Las Naves. Las Naves is an institution, a foundation actually, from the town hall in Valencia, and they are uh, performing so many activities in the area of ICT technology, e-health, and they are also participating in several European projects. They are uh, usually presented in uh, many of the initiatives uh, that uh, arise in Valencia, and they have a long experience in the area of ecosystems because uh, it's some years ago that they were already involved in the preparation of the uh, Valencia ecosystem. So it's a pleasure to have her. Elena, please take the floor. Elena, just to remind you that you're on mute at the minute. So you just need to unmute yourself when you're ready to start speaking. Okay, now. Uh, hello to, good afternoon to everybody. Uh, I'm going to explain what is Las, Las Naves. Las Naves is a foundation, and well, thank you, first of all, thank you, Antonio, for your kind presentation and the, good, the nice uh, words you have dedicated to, to Las Naves and to me. Uh, I, uh, Las Naves is a municipal foundation promoted by Valencia City Council, uh, and its aim is to accompany, the, the, is to promote urban innovation within the city, but the difference is that putting people at the center of the innovative uh, action. Uh, why do we exist? What is so? Let's say our aim in the life. Okay, we we want to accompany processes and initiatives from the city that can provide innovative solutions to the real problems of citizenship and tackle with urban challenges, strengthening the, the social structures of the territory using knowledge and technology. Let's say it is putting innovation at the at the service of citizenship of people to contribute to governance and social cohesion within the within the city. And how we do this? Well uh, we work on innovation and trying to involve the four elites, the public sector, the private sector, civil society and also the research and academy pillar or axis of, 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 of the innovation system. And uh, we work mainly on five strategic sectors, mobility, energy, health, food, and culture. We focus our activity on that vertical sectors, but without uh, forgetting and, and also working, uh, being on account in our activities, citizen uh, partic participation, equality policies, transparency, trying to, to, try to, to look for the employability at all the initiatives and projects we, we, we support. We also work on social economy and social innovative entrepreneurship. Uh, how do we do this? What kind of, of, of tools we use to, to, to achieve this, our aims of, of promoting innovation at the city? Uh, we promote innovation projects. Uh, we promote experimental actions. Uh, in, uh, we try to, to to, we try to test within the city and validate innovative solutions. They can be with technological solutions or, or just inno innovative or other kind of innovation, of social innovation solutions. We want to, to, to transform Valencia in an, in an innovative urban laboratory. Uh, we look for uh, innovative, uh, and, uh, innovative solutions. We, try, we invite actors uh, in uh, innovation, uh, the innovation. Um, stakeholders 
of the, of the innovation ecosystem to try to validate these innovative solutions in our city. We, we, and we try to generate evidence to assess and evaluate, evaluate the potential of these solutions to scale it as new uh, services for the rest of the city and, to, and, for the, and for all the citizens. We also have uh, some innovation networks, let's say the name is Connecta, on the five uh, strategic sectors I mentioned uh, before. We also have a collaborative space to accelerate innovative and entrepreneurial projects that tackle with urban challenges and, and citizenship needs, and, and very link and, and very link to the to the promotion of innovative projects and innovative solutions. Uh, we work to improve and to and to make city policies, city urban policies, more uh, innovative. We accompany public policies directly. Uh, promoted by our city council or our local administration, uh, we try to introduce innova innovation in, uh, within them. Uh, what is the Connecta Salud? Connecta Salud is uh, the, let's say, the, the, the innovation network at the local level for the health sector. We, un we understand in the health in a wide sense, it's, it, it implies uh, everything that has to be. With, that has to that contributes to make of Valencia a healthier city, and we connect citizenship, researchers, hospitals, firms, entrepreneurs, policy makers on the on, on, on the health scope, and, and professionals from health sector, clinical or, or whatever. We this it is a network uh, that has uh, 700 members more or less. And what we do is uh, we we try to to build together collaborative innovative solutions that uh, solve these urban challenges and citizen needs for to get a, to 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 transform Valencia in a healthier city. We also uh, create spaces and, and and opportunities to connect and generate community among these uh, stakeholders. Uh, and we also uh, try to promote to promote joint knowledge and capacities on health. And as and as said before. We, we offer the, the city as urban lab to test and validate innovative solutions. We do that uh, trying to connect in entrepreneurs and innovators with uh, users and with municipal buildings. We offer them and we offer our facilities to test these uh, innovative solutions in a, in a real environment. What other activities we, we do as uh, we have a, an, a relevant role as connectors also like a coalience but a, a local level and we support collaborative initiatives, initiatives that come from the different in, uh, stakeholders of the health innovation ecosystem. Uh, we support local or regional events that they promoted by our members and we also but we also try to attract international events on innovation and on, on entrepreneurship okay uh, you have uh, for instance uh, the the digital health venture forum that was that was held in, in in valencia last october and that will be another edition in next october in uh, during this year we also joined the valencia health ecosystem eip aja and the reference site uh, and the for action group, for instance, we support the health, the Valencia chapter of health 2.0, and we support the TBO, which are uh, some uh, meeting meetups uh, for uh, for entre for scientific entrepreneurs, for instance, and. Um, we are a membership of other health innovation networks, and we and, and we also support. Uh, local pilot projects, but also we take part in European projects. Okay, these are our sources for to innovate and to attract these innovative solutions to validate within our city. Uh, uh, Las Naves is uh, usually is the, the the entity that takes part in name of the city at, at European Projects Consortium. And for instance, we are we are the deployment side leader, one of the deployment side uh, leaders of uh, Activate Project, uh, the one the only large uh, large scale pilot for IoT, uh, and in uh, IGM well uh, funded. 
and uh, I would like also to share with you which are our priorities for to, to look for uh, so innovative solutions, European projects, and, and so on. Okay, uh, we are interested in, in finding out and, and tackling with tackling with determinants of health and inequalities of health, on autonomy and active aging, of course, uh, on disease prevention, especially chronic diseases. And also, on, uh, we want to explore on community health and local health governance and to join capacity building to facilitate health management in all policies. And of course, I mean, these are the topics, but we are also interested in, in tools to achieve this, such as the digital health that we think it is the, the future for, for all of us and for the sector. And that's it for my part. I, uh, I hope it has been interesting for all of you and uh, you know uh, you have my, uh, my contact, people have my contact here and we are always uh, we are always open to, to hear and to and to, to hear new proposals and to connect and to to attract uh, new innovative uh, solutions to for our city. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Elena, uh, and thank you also for keeping the time so well. Now, uh, next uh, speaker is uh, Jay Moreno. Dr. Moreno is speaking on behalf of the University of Valencia, which is also my institution, and I should say that uh, Jane has been involved in the uh, generation of uh, VLC Health uh, from the very beginning. So it's a pleasure to have her uh, today and to uh, speak about uh, which is the profile of the University of Valencia. So Jen, please take the floor. Okay, well, uh, thank you very much for your introduction. Um, and I would like to present this afternoon a general overview. Can you see properly the, the presentation on the screen? Can you confirm, please? The presentation is correct. Yes? Jane, we, we don't see it. We don't see it no. yet. Oh, well, one second, please. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we, we see it now. Yep. Is it okay now? Yeah. Yes? Yeah, okay, thank fine. you. I'm trying to... Uh, there's no other interference, no? You only see the presentation, I believe. Just the presentation, yes. Okay, it, uh, thank you. Well, okay. Well, I would like to first introduce the University of Valencia briefly giving an overview and after we'll focus in on capacities and structures related with uh, health and well-being research. So to start, uh, I would like to say that, well, um, our university was founded over 500 years ago, 500 years ago, but it has become a modern international public university, open to almost all fields of knowledge, as you can see. Uh, we, it's the largest university in the Valencian region, and we have uh, three university campuses in the area of Valencia and another campus in the city of Anteniente nearby. So uh, we must remember that the mission of our university is to train professionals at, uh, professionals at the European level and to encourage top research uh, with international impact, contributing in this way to the development of our society. For this, obviously, then our main activities are focused on education and research, in all uh, education, well, multidisciplinary and, and interdisciplinary, uh, basic and applied research, education, graduate, postgraduate, PhD, and training for professionals. And also, we, we uh, have other related activities, musicals, theater exhibitions, poetry, etc., cultural activities, and other actions related with solidarity and local and international cooperation. Just uh, to be able to see uh, some numbers, um, as an open and international university where we have 18, 18 schools of faculties and uh, teaching uh, 64 degrees with over 46,000 degree students, around 10% international students, and over 10,000 official master degrees and doctoral program students, about 15% of them international. Um, these are some figures, and now I would like to focus in our research, uh, our research structures. Um, in this sense, we have two, 217 research groups carrying out uh, research with international impact, and we are the Valencian University with the highest scientific production and the fourth in Spain. 
Um, the research at the university is conducted through the, uh, the 92 departments, academic departments, and our 27 research institutes and other uh, structures. And we should have be bear in mind also some special um, um, structures and centers, uh, like the ones we can see here and on the slide. I uh, would like to start commenting uh, uh, about the University of Valencia Science Park that is the meeting point for the exchange between the university research groups and companies and for stimulating transfer of knowledge. Um, we will aim to uh, strengthen the, that collaboration and production and creating knowledge and encouraging innovation processes. And for this, the park also provides spaces and services to companies resulting from university research, spin-offs, and other companies and uh, research and development departments with content related with innovations park mission. Uh, to mention that there are 81 startup companies located at Science Park. Um, many of them are related with uh, biotechnology and ICT. Uh, another structure that is the Foundation Rizalcanif, that is a social and health uh, foundation that is really focuses on managing the, uh, the dental, optometry, pediatric and nutrition, physical activity and physiotherapy clinics uh, of the University of Valencia that are open to the university community and general public and also give support to training and research in these areas. We have a, a living lab, the Food and Health Living Lab, including innovation and research activities in the areas of nutrition, food, physiotherapy, psychology, genetics, physical activity, and clinical analysis. And it, and it is part of the European network of living labs. Uh, also to mention the University Clinic Hospital of Valencia Biomedical Research Institute, uh, that manages uh, the biomedical research of the Hospital Clinico Universitario de Valencia and its health department, and as well um, participating scientific excellence groups of the Faculty of Medicine of the University of Valencia and the University of Valencia Institute of Infertility. The clinical research that uh, carried out is focused uh, mainly on four priority areas, oncology, cardiovascular, metabolism, and organ damage and also reproductive medicine. Uh, with an important contribution to international clinical trials and another outstanding uh, network we participate in is the Spanish, we have the Spanish Registry of Childhood Tumors as part of the International Cancer Registries and contributing to fight cancer again, uh, uh, childhood cancer through studying the survival of children with cancer and, and also the incidence and tendencies. And last but not least, uh, the botanic garden, botanical gardens of Valencia that are also in the city and open to the public and belong to the University of Valencia. And there we have a research line related with medicinal plants. Well, on this, um, I would like to um, focus that Nowadays, it's, it's so important to carry out a, a interdisciplinary and multidisciplinary research. And in this sense, the University of Valencia, with its journalistic character, uh, has research activity covering all, almost all branches of knowledge, humanities, science, education, engineering, health sciences, and social sciences. So this uh, helps and uh, favors this interdisciplinary research and this is a strength of our university. Uh, now I would like to briefly uh, focusing on, always we are focusing now on all the capacities related with health and well-being research. Uh, uh, it's just a, a glance to different in research institutes and groups that are working um, mainly in the health and well-being area or have important research lines related to this area. So as to say that the research institutes, as we were saying, are, are structures and multidisciplinary research structures beyond the framework of departments. And they have that aim of meeting demand of the economic and social context in research and transfer fields. And these are the main uh, institutes and other structures uh, uh, carrying out 
research related with health and well-being. As you can see, the um, health science, uh, social science, psychology, uh, experimental sciences, economics, uh, engineering and informatics. And this is a glance to different uh, research groups of the University of Valencia, uh, health science research groups working in, in this area, and all, also all the many research groups uh, belonging to basic experimental sciences research, uh, social legal sciences, education, engineering, informatics, that are working and they were looking in interesting and important research in, related with health and well-being at our university. Also, I would like to, to point out that uh, our university has a research and development management and support services to help all the, these groups and institutes to develop their work. And in this sense, I would like to mention the research service uh, that gives technical and administrative support and helps these groups to carry on their work and to mention the European Research Project Office where I, I work specifically and with their, our aim of promoting the university researchers participation in European and other international research funding programs and in this sense we, like, we want to give support and we give support to our researchers uh, professional management and research projects and distribution of information and um, information about uh, funding opportunities, support for the preparation of proposals, financial management related with the projects and support to mobility of researchers, transnational mobility. Also to present the Office of, of Transfer of research, of research Results, the O3, with the mission of promoting effective relationships uh, and exchange of knowledge uh, applied to the needs of society and, uh, and with a special attention to companies. The Central Service for Experimental Research and Central Unit for Research in Medicine of the University of Valencia provide the university community uh, with a series of scientific and technical services which um, help to solve problems in different areas of research, health and industry and are related with resources of different resources like magnetic resonance services, cell culture, flow cytometry, diffraction x-ray, mass spectrometry, proteomics, metabolomics, sequencing, DNA sequencing and protein sequencing, aquarium and amalarium. There's all these resources that help to solve um, problems related with analysis of materials, structural determinations of sub substances, etc. And um, finally, I would like to also, we have the Spanish type culture collection and also the Foundation University Enterprise that gives support to also the establishing links between the companies and society and the university. This is a brief overview of the University of Valencia and its research capacities and I would like to mention now some of the ongoing health and well-being uh, frame program funded projects we are carrying out at this, uh, currently at the university. Uh, this is all and I would like to thank your attention and you can find here our contact details for any further information you may, may be interested in receiving related with or, or university and our research capacities. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jane. It's now my pleasure to introduce uh, Oscar Sanchez. Dr. Sanchez is uh, speaking on behalf of one of our important uh, members of the working group uh, of uh, VLC Health, which is the uh, Investigation Center Prince Philip. This is a big uh, research institute in which uh, there are very important uh, groups uh, working in the area of biomedicine, uh, basically, and uh, which uh, was uh, funded uh, since the very beginning by the different uh, uh, projects that uh, the investigators are running in the center. Uh, 
So, uh, Oscar, please, uh, you have the floor. Thank you very much, Antonio. Uh, please let me know when you can see my screen. It's perfect, Oscar. Thank you. OK. Yeah. OK. Thank you all. Uh, thank you for your attention. Uh, good afternoon. My, my name is Oscar David Sanchez. I am the head of uh, technology transfer and sponsor research at the CIPF, Principal Felipe Research Center here in Valencia. Uh, well, the CIPF is a biomedical research institute. Uh, legally, we are a non for profit foundation uh, incorporated in, in 2005 with the financial support of the regional government, the regional Ministry of Health, and the European Regional Development Fund. Uh, however, uh, we built on the scientific tradition of, of, of several institutions here in Valencia, the Valencian Foundation for Biomedical Research, Cytological Institute of Valencia, which were some of the pioneering institutions in biomedical research in Spain in the 60s and in the 70s. Well, uh, we do both basic and translational research in the field of human health. We cover, if we can say that, the full value chain of biomedical science, especially in the preclinical part of it. It is from studying genes, target, molecular and cellular processes, uh, and understanding the role they play in human diseases uh, uh, to, develop, uh, to developing new therapeutic and diagnostic approaches. It is to be able to better treat the disease, but also diagnosing it earlier and predicting its evolution and even anticipating the treatment response for each patient, what we call today personalized medicine or precision medicine. To achieve that, we combine uh, multidisciplinary approaches and technologies such as nanomedicine, genomics, computational methods, so on. Of course, our goal is to transfer this knowledge and results to the clinical practice, and uh, so we cooperate with hospitals and pharmaceutical and biotech companies. We are not restricted to uh, any given disease or therapeutic area, although well, our researchers are mainly specialized on cancer, rare and genetic diseases, cognitive and functional decline, among other topics. That makes us able to tackle projects in a wide range of fields, and uh, even we apply our, some of our developments and know-how to other sectors, such as agriculture or cosmetics. From a scientific point of view, our activities are organized around two big areas and two, four research programs. The first one, uh, research on high impact pathologies, covers uh, this basic research focusing on neuroinflammation, cognitive impairment, the study of molecular mechanisms of human diseases. And the second one, application of new technologies and advanced therapies, focuses on the development of new treatments and diagnostics. I think it's worth to highlight that well, some of our research, research, in particular in the field of nanomedicine, well, for example, we host an, an ERC grantee from the European Research Council, developing new anti-cancer therapies, and, uh, and our computational genomics area, we, which is coordinating several European projects and initiatives in the field of, for example, multiomics data integration and analysis. All these research is carried out by 18 research labs, we have also established many joint research units with universities and hospitals in the Valencia region, contributing to improve mutually our capabilities and also to integrate the Valencia research and innovation ecosystem. We have also 10 technological services, animal facilities, atomic screening, genomics, microscopy, so on, that provide support and access to state-of-the-art equipment, not only to our researchers, but also to other institutions and companies. In terms of results, what well, we do research, we produce around 100 peer-reviewed research papers per year. We execute up to well, 100 research projects, many of them in cooperation with other institutions and companies. We have a growing intellectual property portfolio, which we try to develop and to transfer to the market. Several bioinformatics software suites, some of them are used worldwide, and uh, since 2012, we have created four spin-off companies. Uh, Genomitra is a bioinformatics uh, service provider. Biobam actually exploits uh, one of our software solutions uh, called Blast2Go, a bioinformatics platform for functional annotation and analysis of genomic uh, datasets. 
Factor STEM uh, develops cell therapy products for the veterinary market and is a good example of how innovation in human health can also be applied to other sectors. And um, finally, PTS specializes in the uh, custom synthesis of polypeptides for research laboratories in pharmaceutical, cosmetic, and biotech industries. Just some figures. Uh, we have an average staff of 150 people employed directly by the CIPF and around 50 additional research collaborators coming from other institutions, as well as a significant number of students. Of course, most of the staff, I say around 85 percent, is devoted to research. And as I told you before, here you have an overview of our scientific production, around 100 papers per year, most of them in the first quartile, and well, the usual number of PhD students, thesis, and so on. This data correspond to 2015, I think, but well, numbers in 2016 are slightly better. And well, finally, since we talk here about uh, connection and ecosystems collaboration, well, how do we cooperate with other partners, either public or private, national or international? Well, uh, we do research, we do contract research, mainly with pharma and biotech companies, and also cooperative research, very often in the framework of European projects. We provide uh, scientific consulting and technological services, advice, access to equipment, technologies, facilities, and also we provide support in management, technology assessment, and identification of funding opportunities for research activities. And we also try to align our knowledge and technology transfer strategy to foster cooperation with other, with other entities, with our IP portfolio, or for example, by providing a specialized training in some of the areas. And that's all from my side. Here you have my contact information. And well, thank you very much. Thank you, Oscar. Uh, next speaker uh, is me, because uh, I said that uh, we had a last minute problem with Dr. Villacampa. So I will present uh, uh, our own group uh, in which uh, you uh, will find that uh, we are um, within the network of the University of Valencia, but uh, we are also a clinical group uh, uh, developing our activities in the clinical hospital, which is the university, the oldest university hospital in town. So uh, our activities uh, are uh, strongly influenced uh, by the gender profile because uh, we focus our interest uh, in the specific specificities of women and uh, frailty is an area that uh, we are uh, focusing our interest, but also uh, cognitive decline, and as you will uh, find in my next slides, also ICT uh, technology. So just to start, uh, I will give you, and I'm sorry for this uh, so thick slide, but uh, it's just to give you an updating of our um, Carmen, which is uh, one cohort uh, in which uh, we are uh, following some 1,600 women. Uh, they are uh, all postmenopausal women uh, from 50 something to 80 or 80 something years. And uh, the main uh, rationale of our uh, interest is uh, lifestyle uh, as a cost effective measure to reduce uh, frailty, uh, as I said, which is uh, one of our interests. And uh, also, uh, we want to introduce uh, ICT technology just to uh, make uh, pos possible uh, the scalability of our uh, activity, because we uh, understand that it may be reproduced in uh, many other settings within, the, within Europe and uh, also um, the inclusion within the public health system. We think that this is a very important uh, point because uh, since most of the European countries uh, share uh, similar uh, health, uh, public health systems, uh, the success in one of them might be uh, reproduced in many others. Uh, as I said, um, we also have integrated care in which uh, we introduce both primary and specialized care. Uh, we are uh, uh, placed in the university hospital, which is a third level uh, hospital, 
but also we work uh, with our primary care centers, basically with uh, midwives and uh, uh, nurses. Uh, so you have here the results and uh, the impact, as I said, this is 1,600 women. Now we have moved to uh, the integration in uh, not only in H Alliance ecosystem, as I, which is the topic of our webinar uh, this afternoon, but also in some projects, like for example, the, the Focus Project, which is an European project that I will present uh, later on. So this is uh, just uh, to give you uh, an idea of how we uh, organize our work. So we have uh, the door for the gate for entering and the cohort is uh, basically here you have uh, women demanding health control, uh, women's association, uh, also all people university or other sources. And then uh, we introduce a personalized uh, nurse station in which uh, there is a physical assessment which uh, leads us to uh, uh, the recommendation of a personalized lifestyle protocol. Concerning lifestyle, we are uh, <coughs> focusing uh, in physical activity, namely, uh, also a little bit of nutrition, but uh, because of the profile of our uh, professionals, it's basically a physical activity, as I said. Also, uh, at this station, there is a basic evaluation concerning, for example, cardiovascular disease, so we are using some uh, scores or uh, osteoporosis, and then, if there is no uh, requirement of a uh, physician, mm, we may move the retreat to this uh, station in which, as I said, we uh, initiate uh, a lifestyle protocol. And for that, uh, we, uh, uh, we have the participation of nurses, uh, and also uh, we introduce ICT technology. I think uh, this is uh, something quite innovative, because we are using mobile phones to make uh, people to uh, adhere to the program. It's quite known that uh, uh, the main problem of physical activity is not that it is not effective, effective which, is, which it is, but uh, that people don't uh, stay uh, for long in this program. So that's why we are using ST technology. So we assess the impact on quality of life, symptoms, health assessments, and also uh, we have a, a medical economy approach. As I say, we are aiming at getting a good compliance, uh, which will be the guarantee to sustainability, uh, which uh, we expect is good news for the national health system and also for some business uh, options. So this is an area of our interest. Uh, as I said, uh, we are using ST technology. We have a web uh, site, and we have also we are using the social networks, for example, Facebook or Twitter. And this is uh, a little bit of the array of options uh, that we give our women. We have the website, as I said. We are also giving courses for introducing women to uh, ICT uh, technology because this is an area which is a little bit far from uh, the background of the women we have in our uh, center. And uh, we have also uh, programs for introducing uh, general health and, as I said, also social media to support the idea of virtual support groups, which uh, we think uh, is something innovative and for what we are using uh, the mobile, as I said. Also, an area uh, different to our, of our interest is APAHA, in which uh, we are integrated within the A3 uh, action group, and we are coordinating the cognitive and decline group. Uh, we have a, a total of 38 uh, partners from different organizations in Europe and these are the main ones, uh, basically because uh, they are not only partners, but also they are very much involved in co collaborative works that we are performing in uh, community decline. So we have Aston University, uh, Crete, uh, also in Greece, Singular Logic. Uh, uh, we have three Italians, uh, exactly, uh, SA for Life uh, from Genova, and CBIM, which is a technological institute in Parma. And, course at the University of Valencia. And this is just uh, a part of our collaborative work. Uh, I said that we are fi fighting illiteracy in women. This is our uh, um, uh, school uh, for introducing ICT, our, some of our women. And this is a work which is supported by volunteers working in collaboration with uh, CRIT and also with the um, SIE4 uh, from Genova, that I said, from Liguria. Uh, this is a program started in 
2013. And also we have another collaborative work uh, within this other Italian uh, network, uh, US uh, ACLI, which is a national uh, network in Italy, uh, very much uh, dedicated to promote uh, physical activity. So this is uh, what they do. They not only work with children, as uh, it might be from the picture, uh, but uh, with people from all ages, and this is again our groups of women uh, involved in physical activity. We are working with them, we are sharing initiatives, and we are uh, performing a sort of twinning in which uh, we also use uh, ICT technology. We are trying, for example, to share uh, the lectures we give uh, for, uh, for example, presenting uh, topics of interest in health and in which are uh, chair uh, by Skype or by other technologies, uh, which is something uh, quite uh, successful. And this is the end. This is uh, another participation we have. Uh, this is the European project we are uh, coordinating. You have here the list of uh, the other participants. Uh, this is uh, an institute from the Netherlands, uh, from the University of Twente. Also, we have uh, Poland, University of Breslo. Uh, Aston uh, in England, which mentioned uh, in a previous slide. Also, Spedale Maggiore in Milano, uh, Mario Negri also in Milano, uh, Portugal, uh, two centers, the University of Aveiro and the School of uh, uh, Nurses. And then we have two uh, technological partners, Everis, uh, which is a multinational, and also uh, a spin off from the University of Valencia. So, I think this is a little bit the profile we wanted to present in which, uh, as I said, uh, mainly our interest is introducing ICT to uh, get the most of our efforts by uh, making them scalable and also by uh, making them cheaper in order to uh, get very uh, important cost-effective uh, in innovation. And that's all, thank you. So again, uh, I, we continue. Uh, now it's a pleasure uh, to introduce uh, Vicente Traver. Dr. Traver is representing uh, the Polytechnic University of Valencia. This is our brother university, uh, and I say it's our brother because we are sharing more and more initiatives with them. It's been a pleasure to collaborate with them, and I think it's uh, something that is uh, being very fruitful for both universities. Uh, he is also the representative of the Institute Itaca, which is very much involved in technology, and it's a pleasure to have him uh, this afternoon. Vicente, please. Thank you. Okay. So, uh, can you see my screen? I hope you, you can see uh, my my screen. If, uh, if we can see it, fine, Vicente. Okay, perfect. Uh, first of all, let me uh, appreciate uh, Antonio, you are very kind introduction and just say that uh, yeah, everything that you said is uh, more than true because uh, I get the, the idea that there is a very good ecosystem in Valencia and that's why we are running this uh, this presentation just to show the different profiles, this, uh, the complementary skills that uh, we can sum uh, just to uh, solve any any problem or just to bring it to any consortium willing to, to change the, the, the world from a health perspective using uh, IT. In my case, uh, this is Vicente Traver, and I'm going to talk uh, mainly about ITACA, that's uh, one of the institutes uh, from the Polytechnic University of, of, of uh, Valencia, mainly in the uh, IT uh, health uh, field. So, uh, from that uh, perspective, uh, well, just to uh, let you know that, okay, we are an institute belonging to the Polytechnic University of Valencia with more than 100 people working in different IT fields. And uh, with uh, the budget is higher than 5 million euros per year, and external funding is usually about uh, 2 million euros uh, per year, and different spin offs were created here. And uh, mostly, and that's an interesting point 70% of the activities focus on the uh, uh, health field uh, from different perspectives that uh, we'll see later. And also, even we are cooperating with uh, mostly all the entities, all the hospitals, the foundations, and also companies in the in the in the region and uh, outside the, the Valencia region. We have also a joint research unit with Hospital La, La Fe. And we are uh, very pragmatic. I mean, even we are engineers, we are very focused on problem uh, solving. So, what are uh, our um, topics or our uh, main skills about health? 
in and well being in uh, our um, our institute. We are talking about uh, Internet of Health, uh, that means uh, Dr. Google and anything dealing with uh, making uh, searches uh, through Internet, automation and process mining, integrated care management uh, systems, uh, for example, for chronic disease, Internet of Things, standardization, interoperability, quality and enrichment of uh, biomedical uh, data. I mean, when we are talking about the big data, that's uh, something that uh, we need to, to check that uh, well, we have quality, good, good quality in the data, how we can enrich that. Uh, also, uh, we are experts in issue support system, signal and image processing, and also in, in cardiac uh, electrophysiology, clinical and experimental. All these things are uh, inside ITACA, and in uh, our case, that's uh, the, the, the Sabin uh, group, okay, we are one of the groups working just specifically in this, in this, uh, in this field. We have uh, four main research areas. One is about internet and health, where we are focused on, on information quality and health social media. I mean, how the, the use of uh, social media is happening in the in the health field and how we can empower uh, patients and uh, medical staff, and also about uh, health uh, literacy. About Internet of Things, uh, we are, uh, well, this is a very big uh, topic, but we are mainly working on ambient assisted living and how we can produce uh, different services for uh, person, uh, people with uh, specific problems or uh, just unclear problems. And uh, we have developed some uh, social services platform like uh, Universal that has been already tested by more than 6,500 uh, users across, across uh, Europe. We uh, are also pushing different systems for integrated care management, for chronic uh, patient uh, management, developing uh, different ICT solutions for uh, nutrition and fitness from the uh, very, uh, prevention uh, approach and different apps just to promote uh, behavior change. And uh, maybe this is the, the, the most, uh, not, not funny, but uh, maybe most uh, extreme, but this is a very high topic from our side where we are creating a, a large set of, of knowledge we are uh, based on not just that about uh, on process. We are creating a set of uh, tools just to infer knowledge from uh, different processes is happening along the the, the whole uh, workflow cycle for the disease or for uh, the patient is doing. So we we are uh, just inferring knowledge based in, in, in logs. And finally, we have also a, a lab for analysis and quantification of human behavior where we have different uh, gadgets like Google glasses, smartwatches, and uh, so on, and some, some robots. So uh, I forgot to tell you in advance, but uh, we are working in uh, research uh, from national and European initiatives from uh, 1998, so it's almost 20 years ago, with a large set of uh, both national and European projects. But if uh, we talk about uh, what are we are current projects, uh, just focusing on, on, on the, the previous uh, slide, we have, uh, for example, Salupedia. Salupedia is a, a repository of, uh, of uh, content, health content uh, that's uh, stamped or uh, that, that the quality is good because it has been already previously checked by, 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 by professionals. We have uh, also uh, observatics, that's also for, for the analysis of uh, social networks in hospitals. Uh, we have, sorry, we have uh, uh, ALTAS, that's uh, an Erasmus project, uh, just focus on education for informal career. Uh, we have Interiote, this is a, a, a project uh, just uh, launched very recently where we are developing a set of uh, uh, IoT activities in the in the health field with a uh, uh, department of uh, Italy where we are promoting a healthy uh, lifestyle uh, just trying to fight against uh, obesity in, in in Italy in in in, in Torino in a cooperation with uh, La Fe, now we are developing a personalized uh, solutions for uh, nutrition about uh, uh, cystic fibrosis uh, and uh, we have also about uh, nutrition uh, different projects like uh, this one that's uh, well the, 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 the two following one that was a uh, uh, flash diet and nutri pro where we were analyzing and providing 
different uh, tools and activities uh, for, uh, for example, for elderly and children. We were assessing the, the malnutrition assessment in different residences and we were also creating a, a MOOC, uh, creating a material just to, to assess how, uh, how to fight against uh, malnutrition, that's uh, one point. And so we develop a set of, of, of games for, for kids just to promote healthy, healthy habits from a nutrition uh, perspective. And we have also the, the LINK project that uh, with cooperation with uh, Hospital of Milan, uh, with, uh, Politecnica Milano and uh, University of Coimbra, where we are promoting uh, personalized healthcare uh, algorithms and computing, uh, what, in, uh, mainly in the cardiovascular uh, area. With uh, or regarding uh, process mining, we, we have also started two projects. Uh, one European project that's called Cloud Health, that's about big data for uh, public health policies. In this case, our pilot would be again uh, about uh, obesity. This is a joint project also with Hospital La Fe. And in this uh, case, uh, well, we, are, we are using uh, process mining just to, to infer knowledge from uh, such databases. And uh, we have uh, started a, a very large a national project with more than uh, 7 million uh, euros funds, where we are working with uh, the largest private uh, hospitals in, in, in Spain, that's the Quiron Group, and also with Telebase, we are again, we are just uh, based on process mining, inferring and creating some knowledge that will be uh, applied for uh, diseases in the field of uh, sleep, nutrition, uh, endocrinology, and uh, cardiology. Uh, okay, so also it's some facts. We have more than, uh, well, it's not also as principal Philip because this is a, a reduced group, but we have uh, 30 publications in, in, uh, in uh, UCR. We have uh, a lot of agreements with companies. Uh, also, we, we as university, we are just uh, tutoring a lot of PhDs, postdocs, or uh, tutorships. We have involved in more than 75 uh, European Union or national projects. The average every every year it's uh, more than one million euros, and specifically uh, from here we have uh, created two two spin-offs. We have already cooperating with uh, Telefónica, Vodafone, Kiron, Telebes, Diario Medico, Mectoric, or uh, mostly all the all the big players. We have been working with them, and we are used also to receive visitors from different co uh, countries just to. Exchange knowledge from Chile, China, Norway, uh, Colombia, Portugal, or Italy, for for example. How, what do we offer? Uh, well, uh, our experience uh, in the in, in the field or, uh, or around the activities. Also, we can offer this this support to R and D on the field for uh, for third parties, some consultancy services. We, we uh, and also, as university, we are providing and we are teaching uh, both master and bachelor on biomedical engineering. So we we have also a, a good amount of students willing to to be working on, on real condition and just looking for for new challenges just to be addressed. So from that perspective, we are also uh, having good uh, and fresh blood just to inject any any in, in, anywhere. And we can offer also uh, an access to a large European uh, ecosystem. Just to uh, end, uh, well, here there are, there are some uh, useful information with some links that you can check if you are interested on, on that. And that's my, my contact. And again, I would like to, to, to express my, my gratitude to Dr. Cano and Connected Health Alliance. Uh, thank you, Don Antonio. Thank you, Vicente. Uh, excellent presentation. Now uh, we move on to uh, Institute Polybienestar. Polybienestar is a research institute uh, on social welfare policy. Belongs to the University of Valencia. So uh, we share same university, our group and Polybienestar. But it is a pleasure to have them because uh, they are so active in so many European uh, initiatives. They are very much involved in ETH, in other uh, big uh, initiatives in Europe, in so many European projects, and they are at the very uh, top level of research and, uh, in the area of uh, welfare, uh, social welfare policy. So it's a pleasure to have uh, here uh, Elisa Valia instead of Jorge Garcés, who couldn't make it uh, this afternoon. 
Elisa is uh, indeed, she is uh, the person who has been uh, connected with our BLC Health Institute, uh, ECH Alliance uh, ecosystem. So she is a, a regular member of our working group, and it is a pleasure to have her for presenting Bolivian Star. Please, Elisa. Thank you, Antonio, and thank you, Ecalians, for giving us the, the opportunity to be here uh, with all attendees, explaining what we what we are uh, doing in the field of health and welfare. Um, well, as Antonio Cano mentioned, we are a research institute belonging to the University of Valencia, and we are specialized in the design, implementation, and evaluation of public policies in different fields. Uh, among these fields, of course, um, the health sector or, or the health and social policies uh, related to well-being and, and the social protection is one of our strongest uh, research lines. And um, this work we are uh, performing also in, in collaboration with many, many European networks. Uh, this, we think this is a very, very important uh, element to be uh, connected with other networks, to be updated, to be connected with other uh, people in Europe that are doing uh, things that may be similar to what we do, uh, to put together all the efforts to make uh, progress on, on science. So we have um, we are very active, as Antonio Cano mentioned, in in the EIP on active and healthy aging, especially in Group D4, but also in Group uh, C2 and B3. Uh, the Group D4 uh, is about age-friendly environments, uh, cities and communities, and there we are leaders of two different coordination groups. Uh, we are also active uh, in Group C2 about independent living and uh, B3 about integrated care. So we have, uh, we belong to the University of Valencia, but we have seven associated units uh, to Polybenestar, which uh, are composed by experts from many different disciplines uh, of other un Spanish universities. Um, and also we have one international unit in, in Paraguay. So this gives uh, our group, uh, Bolivian Star, a high interdisciplinary approach and uh, to all our research activities and all the activities that we carry out uh, in the Institute. Specifically in the Valencian unit, we are developing um, the research lines that you may see now on your screens. Uh, of course, those related with health and well-being are um, the strongest one now in the, in the in the institute. We well mainly develop our activity in the framework of uh, competitive European funding programs. We are now um, involved as partners in seven ongoing uh, projects funded by the Health Program of the Euro European Commission, depending on uh, the Director General Sante. And, uh, of course, active aging and health um, research from a, from a comprehensive perspective uh, of uh, integrated care and social and health care systems is one of our main str uh, strengths. So our current activities in health, uh, focusing on the, on the projects that we are developing uh, now that are ongoing, still ongoing, uh, we can group them in three different categories. So we uh, have activities uh, related to integrated care. Uh, we have other uh, activities, other projects related to the optimization and sustainability of health and social care systems. And we have uh, also uh, more and more activities related to the assistance and protection of uh, vulnerable migrants and refugees. So going a bit into detail of the projects that, that we are now developing, uh, we would like to highlight in the field, let's say, of integrated care, the EUHC uh, Urban Health Center project, uh, which is um, coordinated by Erasmus Medical Center in Rotterdam. Uh, actually, the main output of this project is to uh, enable, to create and validate a transferable and easy implementable model for the Innovative Human Health Center. Actually, 
the main aim is uh, of this project is to redefine the relation of citizens with the primary health centers, uh, going to a more uh, preventive approach, more than assistance. And uh, in that project, we have um, implemented uh, the pilot in the Valencian, in the city of Valencia, uh, which was one of the of the five pilots carried out in the in the framework of the project. This project is about to finish in some months, and we will have uh, final results uh, very soon. Um, we also work on on the development of comprehensive models of care. Uh, in this sense, one of our main projects in terms of, of uh, scope and also of budget is the UpCare project, where we are developing three different pilots, one in Valencia, and the main output should be um, the, the development of a comprehensive model of appropriate care for freight elderly patients. Actually, the identification of patients, of, of participants in, in this project, in this pilot, is made at uh, the emergency room of the hospital, in this case of the Hospital La Fe, which is one of the largest hospitals here in the city. Um, another one, uh, another very interesting, very relevant project uh, in the field of health is the Sirocco project. Actually, this project um, aims to, to work um, on one of the main barriers for the effective implementation of innovation in, in healthcare systems, which is related to the limitations of um, scaling up uh, pilot experiences that have been proved uh, as being effective um, in, in, to be applied in, in the whole system, to be integrated in the system. So uh, this is a very interesting project, uh, which I encourage you to follow. Uh, there we are. Well, we will elaborate uh, policy recommendations based on the lessons learned during the project, which should help um, interested regions to implement and to use the Sirocco tool that we are developing in the framework of the project. So, um, I really encourage you to follow this project. In the field, or in the in the in the yes, in the field of optimization and sustainability of healthcare systems, we can um, highlight uh, the CEFAC project and the EFICRONIC project. Um, actually, they are very different, although they are funded by the same program. One of them, the first one, CEFAC project, is, um, uh, well, the main output is the, as, is the development of a social engagement framework and a toolkit for chronic disease prevention and management at the community level, so to foster community-based uh, care and community-based services. So in this project, Polistar will develop the social engagement tool and evaluate the impact of the project. Um, this project is about to start in, let's hope, two months, um, as well as the Epichronic project, which is um, a, a health program funded project whose main output is uh, to provide evidence on the positive return of investment and relevant data on cost efficiency of the application of the chronic disease self-management program uh, in five different European countries. Although Spain is one of these countries, we are not developing the, um, the pilot, uh, let's say, experience. We are in charge of the evaluation of the project in terms of impact and also in terms of um, execution. The long-term multi-agent simulator project and the simul chronic project are projects that aim uh, to contribute to the development and of, uh, well, the creation and, and validation of simulation tools, which may help uh, policymakers and other um, high-level uh, responsibles of the health system to um, to make decisions uh, with additional support. So uh, the output of this project is, should be uh, intelligence support systems that help uh, decision makers in the process of decision making. Uh, then we have other projects as the Prometeo, which is uh, regional funded, and the ASAS project, which uh, ended um, at the end of, uh, well, uh, in June 2016. And these projects are related to the um, development and validation of certification tools 
in order to make it more efficient uh, the way that healthcare systems um, uh, prevent and assist uh, especially frail people. Well, as you may know, uh, the European Commission has put a lot of uh, efforts and also in terms of budget uh, to develop solutions for uh, the integration and the well-being of vulnerable migrants and refugees since this population has been identified as uh, high vulnerable and high demanding of this kind of services uh, in the health and also in the social sector. Um, the MIG Health Group project aims to uh, develop a roadmap to uh, move to effective community-based care models um, addressing this population and there uh, Polyminister will be in charge of uh, the evaluation of the project and also of a pilot experience in the city of Valencia. This project is also about to start in two months and we, uh, we hope uh, well, we believe actually that this project will lead to very uh, interesting results. Then we have also uh, two projects. Um, one is the, continue, the continuation of, uh, of the other, and these are the EN4 uh, project and the EN6 project, um, which are uh, funded by the Erasmus, uh, the Erasmus Plus program, and both um, uh, we're focusing on developing training uh, tools and training materials for professionals to uh, improve their skills in the cultural competence and the psychological support to these populations of vulnerable migrants and refugees. Um, he, uh, the first project, the NF4, is, uh, has ended by the end of last year and uh, year six is, uh, has started some months ago, about two or three months ago. Um, well, I hope uh, you got an overview of what we are doing in the field of health. You have our uh, web page uh, on screen. You can check all our activities and more information on the projects that we are carrying out uh, right now and that we have concluded already. And you have my email address in case you need to contact me for further information or for any request. Thank you very much. Thank you, Elisa. Uh, nice presentation. Um, now we have a uh, next speaker is uh, Javier Gamez. He's representing our, our Valencia reference site. Uh, this is, uh, I think, is an important presentation in that uh, ecosystem, the Valencia ecosystem is very much interested in sharing because uh, finally much of what we aim uh, is common in between the reference site and the ecosystem. So is uh, very, uh, we are happy to have, uh, to have Javier here this afternoon to present the main features of the Valencia reference site. It's a free star reference site which uh, is uh, already a few years uh, uh, since uh, it uh, began because it was also a reference site in the first wave of reference site from the European Commission. Please Javier. Javier, you're, you're still on mute. Javier, el micrófono, por favor. Okay, okay, sorry. <laughs> the, the, okay, now I, uh, I am on. Okay, can you see now my screen? We see it, it, it looks good. So, sorry for that, Thank sorry. For that. Thank you very no. much, uh, Antonio, for your nice presentation. Um, my uh, my aim here is to present the, the reference site of Valencia. It's nice to to have all the speakers uh, that are uh, sharing with me this session because all of them are part of this uh, reference site. We had uh, three stars. We were awarded with three stars in the in the last um, event of AP Onaha in, in Brussels last December. So it's nice to 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 be with them and to share this this session. So um, Opesval um, is the coordinator of, uh, of the reference site of Valencia. Let me say some words about uh, Opesval first. 
OpenSpal is a network of the six institutions that manages the manage the um, uh, health projects in the Valencia region. We are funded by the Ministry of Economic Affairs and Competitivity, and we are supported by the um, uh, Regional Ministry of Health. Uh, two of the of these um, foundations have been already been uh, introduced. That is in Cliva from the University of Valencia and uh, the research center of um, Principe Felipe, Prince uh, Philippe. Uh, and also I would like to highlight that we are sharing this network with uh, La Fe, Fisabio, and also the, the um, hospitals from uh, Valencia and uh, Castellón. Let me give you some numbers briefly about Opesval. In 2016, um, we have published more than 2,000 papers. We are uh, almost 3,000 researchers working uh, together. We are enrolled, uh, or we have been enrolled in uh, almost 40 European projects and international projects. We have carried out more than 2,000 clinical trials. So as you can see, we have a large experience in, um, in biomedical research. We are focused in cardiovascular diseases, obesity, big data, I mean, all the main uh, research areas of um, that the European Commission are, are uh, pointing out. The objective of OPESVAL are mainly these four. We aim to, to promote the research aligned with the European research agenda. We are trying to increase the skills of the researchers and uh, professionals of uh, EU, uh, EU projects. We also aim to improve the results, the success in the, Europe, uh, in the EU calls, and also uh, we aim to support the Valencian uh, researchers in age 2020. So it's, it's nice to share this session with all the ACH Alliance partners, because if you are looking for uh, a Spanish partner and focused in health and biomedical research. And we are, I'm sure that we can uh, connect you with the proper partner. So now let's go back to the um, res uh, reference site of, of Valencia. We are a very nice ecosystem, as I introduced in, in the first slide. Um, all of this ecosystem is, is uh, present in this nice uh, webinar. Uh, the main partners that we have are the Regional Ministry of Health, Regional Ministry of uh, Social Affairs. For us, uh, as we are following the for the quadruple innovation helix, it's very important to to rely on uh, on the, the government, on the public government. We are also um, we include also in the uh, in the reference side the, the city council uh, of Valencia. Also, the two public universities that have been introduced in this webinar. Uh, University Politecnica, uh, University, Polytechnic University of Valencia, um, and also the University of Valencia, with Itaca and uh, Polygon Star Research Centers, respectively. And also, of course, the VLLC Health is included in this uh, reference site, and also in there, and the Valencia International Campus of Excellence. The next two slides, I, I prepare yeah, two slides with few insights about what we are doing in the AB on AHA action groups. Uh, since uh, my colleagues from uh, the reference site have introduced all of the, with, with more detail, all the, these projects, the main aim for me uh, on, on this, in, in these slides is just try to stress, to, to point out that we are present in all the action groups of the AB on AHA. Uh, uh, network. And for finished, I would like to, to share with you what are the challenges for the future that we have in, in Valencia on active and healthy aging. I represent these challenges as pillars because we think that it's very important to follow these three pillars. The first one is networking. We aim to, to, con to promote the networking among the um, the Valencia reference site members. We are aware that we have a, a complementary um, experiences and complementary expertise among our partners. So we are trying to promote collaboration among them. And also, um, and to be honest, for me, in this kind of webinar, more important is the collaboration between um, partners across Europe. 
we are working in different um, many many uh, research projects european projects so and we have we are a multidisciplinary group of people behind the, re the reference site so i am sure that um, we can contribute with our add value to a specific project so please if you are looking for a partner uh, in, in um, spain just contact us because i'm sure that we can uh, put you in contact with the with a proper partner the second one, the second challenge, the second pillar is the alignment with the Europe, with Europe. Let's say we are very, um, we know that the European Research Agenda is one of our main targets. We need to follow it. Uh, we also are very um, interested in the three O's paradigm. That means open science, open to the world, open innovation. I would like to stress here the role of the society in, in science that we want to, to, to stress and to work with end users and organizations. And also, um, we think we are trying to include the technology in all our projects, or many of them, because we are aware that this um, is, the, is, is a good way to proceed. Is, uh, technology could enable a lot of process and a lot of uh, processes and a lot of interventions. And last but not least, uh, we are trying to scale up all interventions. This is one of the main aims of uh, the reference sites. We, we are aware that um, across our region there are many little villages that are doing uh, great uh, interventions related with uh, active and healthy aging. And we are trying to, to enroll them in, in the reference site and try to transfer these interventions to other villages, other cities that are, let's say, beginners in the AP, in, in active and healthy aging, and are very happy to to try to follow uh, these experts in in these interventions. And uh, also, we are um, we think that it's very important to assess, to measure the impact of these interventions in order to um, to have more control and to take decisions about what to do in the future. So here you have my, my contact details. I will be very happy to um, yeah, share with you more information about the reference site and also OpenSval. And thank you again for the possibility to be here with all of you. Thanks to you, Javier. Uh, and now uh, we have the last speaker uh, from DCM Partners, which is uh, Eduard Torregrosa. DCM Partners is uh, our uh, company representative this afternoon. Uh, they are uh, very much interested in uh, detecting uh, social needs uh, and also uh, important uh, innovation initiatives uh, in order to guide, for example, investors or uh, also to uh, help uh, entre entrepreneurship uh, and uh, other initiatives. So. It's important. Uh, we wanted to have them in our working group since the beginning, also because they have been very much involved uh, in the initiative about the ecosystem in Valencia. So it's a pleasure to have Edward. Please, Edward, uh, take the floor. Okay. Good afternoon. My name is Eduardo Torregrosa. I represent in this webinar DCN Ventures. I'm in charge of project analysis and management control of companies invested and two uh, for the technologies uh, around the project. But it's, it's not possible to move the, right. the slides. Edward, just make sure that you are selected on the um, on the Adobe PDF reader. Yeah. Yeah, and then you should be able to move the slides forwards and backwards. No. No. It's okay. Uh, is it is it working for you? 
Yeah. Okay. Look, you can see. You can see. Yeah. Okay. Um, Do you see? No, you we can don't. See the... We don't see it just yet. One second. So you should have an option to share screen now. Is that displaying? There we go, we see it now. I think we're on the second slide. Is it okay? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's working. Thanks everyone. DCN, DCN Ventures develops the management of three investment funds which have co-invested mainly in life science and digital technology projects. You can see on this slide the most relevant aggregate figures of the three investment vehicles. About 7 million euros invested in 23 startups and we have realized seven exits. We received uh, last year more than 400 projects to review. The management team is currently composed by the people who can see on this slide, Lucas Martin, Santiago Reina, Cristina Dalmau and myself. They have, well, we have the support of two advisory committees in life science and digital technologies oriented to validate the technology in which is it it's intended to invest and whose components have great experience in their areas of knowledge. Since 2009, we have invested in seven companies related to life science. Several of them are based in the United States. You can observe in these slides their main activity and the co-investors. For example, Bioncotech is now in clinical phase. Bionure is, in the, is ending preclinical. And Artax is involved in clinical trials too. This slide presents four remaining life science companies that we have invested in life science. We highlight here the recent successful exit of the first bio company in which we invest many years ago in the hand. The last investment in this area has been Farmacelera. Our digital portfolio is composed by many, many companies that you can see here. And one of them, in the next one, is a human life that is a, a company, a platform related to the second medical opinions. Our investment activity is carried out through a strategy of co-investment with other investment funds and entities nationally and internationally, as you can see in the present slide. Through our network of relationship, we share investment projects and we forward the contact to guide the exit of the company once covered our role after more or less between five or eight years when we are um, finished the this valley for the company. We are at your service and thank you very much for, for the opportunity and here you are our contact details. Thank you. Thank you Edward uh, for keeping the time so you have uh, made possible that uh, we complete uh, the webinar just on time, even one minute ahead of time. So, uh, 
I don't think there is uh, any question, and we don't have actually we don't have time for that because uh, we are just at the uh, 4:30. So uh, again, uh, I hope you have enjoyed uh, this uh, webinar. Uh, I hope uh, that you have a, a better view of uh, what uh, DLC Health uh, ecosystem uh, is as a, a member of uh, ECH Alliance. And uh, I hope uh, that you will uh, be able to uh, probably, I hope, uh, to uh, have uh, the opportunity uh, to contact with us or to have uh, maybe the possibility of sharing your work or your initiatives uh, with BLC uh, Health. It's also the moment to thank again ECH Alliance for the help uh, in the preparation of the webinar, <coughs> for the technical support. Uh, so uh, much uh, to Michaela and to Heather, uh, they have been there uh, at all moments. Uh, they have been working actually with few days because uh, we have uh, been busy in Valencia with different uh, feasts and celebrations. And finally, we didn't have uh, all the time we, we wanted for the preparation. So I think it's been a success. I thank a lot uh, ECH Alliance. I thank uh, all of you for being there, uh, attending the seminar. And I thank uh, the speakers for keeping the time uh, for such an uh, interesting presentations that have uh, made a thing and I hope a, a big success of the seminar. Thanks a lot and have a good afternoon. Thanks, Antonio. Thank, thank you. you, Antonio. Thank you. Gracias, thanks. Gracias. Thank you, good evening. Thank you, bye-bye.